one, this is Supreme Decisions, and today is the Supreme Decisions Legal Minute Podcast. I haven't been on here for a while, but hope you guys are forgiving me on that. But what I want to talk about today is due process. Due process is something that we are expecting to receive whenever we are, whenever we become involved with the legal system. Now, what I want to talk about today in the context of due process is going to be the standards and how they may, may be lowered in the presence of overwhelming video and photography evidence and guilt. Because one of the things that we're often seeing now is the fact that people have more ready access to good quality video when they are having an interaction with the police. And we know more than 76% of video does not come from police whenever we're talking about court interactions. Now, in this context, we're going to talk about or debate about the constitutionality of due process protections when it comes to these videos. Because I'm not sure how old you are as you're listening to this, but I'm from an era where we watched 12 police officers beat Rodney King to oblivion and the public say, eh, it was okay. And then later say, okay, he's going to be awarded X amount of millions of dollars because it wasn't right. While these police officers remain policing these same citizens. So we look at a video I did because again, um, it was sent to me by a young man who was involved and a lot of times people said, well, why didn't he just comply? Why didn't he just do this? Why didn't he just do that? Or this police officer was really nice, so it should have been okay. Well, he officer and the officer was um, Blake Simmons of the Frisco Police Department here in Texas. And what happened was Blake Simmons, although nice, Immediately when a supervisor came on the scene, as was asked, Blake Simmons began to lie and create a narrative. This nice police officer lied and created a narrative on video. While the case was dismissed, at the same time, the federal case is stalled. Why? Because this nice officer is now not really seeing violating law even though he performed a search without consent, he performed a search and took away things out of a place that was secured without a warrant. He did this without probable cause. So in context, he did this without following his own oath and law. The law he is upholding. But he was a nice guy. But even with the video, it's difficult to prosecute. Why? Because piranha don't eat piranha. But again, the due process standards in these protections have to be exercised in a manner that generally is not fast. And what they're doing as a prosecutorial tactic, in this case a defensive tactic, is using timelines to extend these punishments or prolong the availability of punishment to see if you are way able to withstand the longevity of these actions. Now, in Title IX is a federal statute that prohibits discrimination on the basis of sex in any educational programs or activities that receive federal funding. Now, this was one of the things that was really big in California I want to say in 2012 and what happens is it now starts to leak into other aspects of it but even in that I'm going to go I'm, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this so just stay with me in Doe v. Ohio State University federal and state governments may not deprive any person of life liberty or pros property without due process of law. Now, procedural due process requires 
that a person subjected to deprivation by the government receive notice and an opportunity to be heard, both of which been defined in detail by the Supreme Court. And we know this because the Supreme Court exhibits the law of the land. And even Matthews v. Eldridge discusses the requirements of constitutionality, sufficient opportunity to be heard. And in Mullane v. Central Hanover Bank and Trust, and it discusses the requirements of constitutionality of sufficient notice. Because remember, due process requires notice and an opportunity to be heard. And it's been done in detail by the Supreme Court. Matthews v. Eldridge, Mullane v. Central Hanover Bank and Trust. Now, when we're talking about the ideas, constitutionally acceptable because visual evidence established the guilt of the accused. Photos and videos are objectively depict guilt in court in its due process analysts. Basically, what we're always told is a picture is worth a thousand words. A video speaks for itself. But again, perception is king. Because the ideals that one has actually allows for bias to sleep in. Allows for prejudice to seep in. And it allows us to shape these ideals, these videos, these pictures, and these words into scopes of our own experiences, our own interactions, our own depictions of what they should and are telling us. And this is why when we're talking about the constitutionality of it, it becomes something because our environment shape our thoughts, it shapes our being, and it shapes our perception, which generally means when we're looking at something, it doesn't mean that we all see it in the exact same way. Because apply a preponderance of evidence standard to video. When courts apply this standard, it actually goes into a deeper idea of who sees what and how. And that's why whenever you're talking about this, I speak about how the prosecutor has to go into this thing of intent. A picture very seldom actually shows intent. A video can show a stage of intent depending on who it's being shown to. I'm going to say that one more time. A picture has an opportunity to show you intent. A video shows intent depending on who you are showing it to. Because even when we talk about the, the complexity of perception, even showing a video such as the Rodney King video, such as the Blake, um, Blake Simmons video. It clearly shows the defendant violated the constitutional due, um, due process rights under 42, 1983. However, the courts are slow to judge those who they deem is infallible. Because I often talk about the thing where we often tell people, well, you should just comply. Why is nobody ever asking the officer to do the job properly? Yes, I pause for dramatic effect because I want you to understand what it is that I'm giving you. I want you to understand that. Because when we're talking in the context of this, I'm showing you something. Because right then I just, I just dropped something on you that... Many of you that probably just started listening to me have never heard. Because the reason it's foreign 
Ooh, excuse me. The reason it's foreign is because it's never or rarely asked. Because even when we're talking about this, that seemed cringy. It seemed out of the norm. It seemed in a manner in which you perceive it to be. Yes, again, pause for dramatic effect because I want you to think about it. Because in section 1983, it creates a private right of action for individuals who are deprived of any rights, privileges, or immunities protected by the Constitution of the United States or federal law by any person acting under the color of state law. So whenever Blake Simmons decided to not get consent, not decided to ignore not having probable cause because an expired registration does not require a search. Because what are you searching for? The re registration? He made a decision to act outside of any law. He made a decision to act outside of his oath. When these police officers decided to use excessive force, they made a decision to act outside the scope of restraining someone. They made a decision to act outside the scope of the procedures that they were taught to 